Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the simple course timer that's part of the suite of pro modules uh, that supplement the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit. Now, this module enables time tracking inside of Learn Dash courses. So as learners go through course, lesson, topic, quiz, and other post types that are part of Learn Dash, then time would be tracked as people incur time inside their browsers and then it's accumulated against the course. So we track at the lesson, topic, quiz, and other levels and then it all rolls up to the course level. So all of the data is tracked in the system um, for those individual objects and then we report at the course level. And we report on two things. We report on the total time inside a course so this would apply when learners are just going through the course and haven't completed it yet, <clears throat> as well as when users have completed it and they're going back for future reference. And then we're also tracking the time when they complete the course. So at the point that they complete the course, we save a value um, for the total time in course so that we have that fixed record of how much time they've spent to complete the course. Now they can spend additional time in the course and it won't be recorded against that value. So you can see here the example that we've set where we've got both the total course time and the course completion time. And of course the completion time is going to be lower than the total course time if they've spent extra time in any of the Learn Dash pages that are part of this course. And you can see right now it is actually tracking this data. It's not going to update in real time. But if I refresh the page, I'm using short codes, and you can see that I've already spent an additional three minutes on this course page. So it's accumulated against the total time, but not the completion time, because I've already completed the course, and that's locked. You can see also that for, for performance reasons, there is a bit of rounding that's happening, uh, just so that there aren't too many calls and there's not um, a performance hit on the server by tracking to the second for all of these values but it's going to be extremely close to uh, what users are actually spending inside the course. So I've shown it on the front end. I want to talk a bit about how things are stored on the back end and how this is available to administrators as well. So if we look at how this page is set up, so I'll go and edit that, there are some shortcodes available and there are a number of attributes that can be used against them as well if you have different reasons for showing um, data for particular users or particular courses outside of just the individual user's use. So you can see here that I'm using a short code for UO underscore time to show total time tracked for the course. And this is again across all post types that are part of the course. And then we also have the short code UO underscore time underscore course underscore completed, which shows completion time for the user for the course. This short code should be used pretty sparingly, uh, just because there's not going to be any value for this if the user hasn't yet completed the course. This only gets populated once the user um, passes the completion point. So Learn Dash has tracked that they've completed the course. That's the only time this will get populated. So. Again, it's not it's not something that's going to be of use a lot as people are progressing through the course, but for administrators in particular, if you're interested in, in seeing how long it took someone to complete a course, then uh, this, this information is helpful. And it is included in the Learn Dash reports. So let's take a quick look at that. So it extends the Learn Dash reports and adds additional columns so that if you do export user course data from inside Learn Dash, then what you will get is something that looks like a regular Learn Dash CSV export, except that there are two additional columns. So we've got the total time here and the completion time. So you can see I generated this one a few minutes ago actually when it was still at 1010 for that course instead of the 1330 that it's at now. So the total time shows how much time these users have spent inside this course. So the one that I was just in now is uh, course one closed and again it's a demo platform, demo courses, so not valid data, it's just test data. Um, but you can see how we tracked there, how it was incremented, and uh, the completion time. So we've got the, uh, the record for that user. And again, we do, we do track at the lesson and topic and quiz level, but at this time it's not available for reporting. Um, there will be a solution for that, but at this time we're looking at summary level course data. 
uh, strictly for the reporting. But it is tracked, of course, for everything within that. Now, when you're setting this up for the first time, so when you're going into the settings, so this is on the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit settings page, um, you'll want to make sure that this is on, first of all. And, of course, it goes with it saying that until this is turned on, no time will have been tracked. Um, time is only tracked as long as this is on. So if this is off, then no time will be tracked. And turning it on isn't going to give you historical records. So it's only going forward that time will be accumulated and stored in the system. So if you plan on using this, make sure that you turn it on as, as soon as you want to start tracking data because it's not going to give you anything historical. Now once it's on, uh, you can click on the settings here and there are a number of things you can set up. So beyond just tracking time, we did implement it so that um, we want to discourage people from just leaving their browsers open on a course page and having all of that time tracked. Um, so if, if that's a concern for your courses in your site, then what you can do is, is we do make it possible to set a, um, an idle timer. So basically, we're looking to see if people are spending too much time on a page. And if they are spending too much time on a page, then we show a prompt that says, yes, I am still active on the page. Or um, if they don't reply to it, or if they're not, if they cancel out of that, then it's going to return them to the home page. Um, and then when this pops up as well, we do stop tracking time. So if we detect that a user is not active, so they've extended or they've been on a page for longer than this time, then we stop tracking it just to avoid situations where users are accumulating time just by having the browser open and on a course page. So this is uh, a way of preventing that from happen happening. So there are a couple of settings here. First, um, how long do you want to set it up? Like in some cases, it might make sense for five minutes across all the Learn Dash pages. For other ones, maybe there are long videos on Learn Dash pages, so maybe it doesn't make sense to have it five minutes. Maybe it should be an hour or something, or you don't want to make it really restrictive. You just want to make sure people aren't leaving it open overnight or something. And in that case, maybe you want a longer time note period. So this is the global one, but this can be overwritten at the lesson and topic level. So as um, if you if you have particularly long lessons or topics, then I'll show you where you can override that at the individual level. And I'll also show you what that looks like. So here's where we can set the global setting for the uh, idle time for that. Um, beneath that, we have a message here that can be customized. And then beneath that, we have text to indicate that there, this is the label on the button to indicate that the user is still active. There's also a label for if they're inactive or want to cancel out of this, they're not in the course anymore. And then uh, we can redirect them. So if they are timed out and not active anymore, then you know let's choose a page that we can send them to instead to get them out of the course. So in this case, I can just make this the, uh, the home page. And then that can be saved. Now, 600 seconds is a long time for testing purposes for this video. I don't want to sit on a page for 10 minutes. But if we go back and we were on, I'm going to go back to the course page that we were on previously. So let's go back through to the course page. And you can see there are some other um, toolkit modules on here, like the resume button and uh, the dashboard. So I'm going to go back into this one and let's go ahead and edit this lesson. Okay, so here's a lesson with a video. We'll go ahead and edit that. And what we've done is extended the default Learn Dash settings for lessons. So in the meta box that you'd normally find on lesson pages, you'll see there are a bunch of extra settings in here. Some of them are covered in other videos because they're part of other pro modules. Um, but you can see right here, so we can set an override in here. So instead of the 600 seconds that I set for the global setting, so this would be across the site, I could make this one 15 seconds. So just for testing purposes, if someone spends more than 15 seconds on this particular lesson page, then let's prompt them and make sure they're still active. 15 seconds isn't very realistic for uh, real world real-world scenarios, but uh, for this test, 
and it's a good example of uh, how the the timeout works so I'm going to sit here for the next 15 seconds and uh, wait for it to pop up so somebody could be on this page they could be reading the text usually it's going to be something longer um, and as they spend time here then this is what's going to happen we're going to pop up this message and again this text is customizable as was just shown if I want the timer to continue because I'm still on this page then I would go ahead and click OK it's going to show me the content again and it's going to turn the timer back on and then again it's going to do the same thing so if I'm sitting here for another 15 seconds that would pop up again so I don't really need to do that because you've already seen it once now um, and that's essentially what it does so if I click cancel here then it's going to do the redirect behavior that I'm no longer active in the course and it's going to take me back to the page that I specified for the redirect behavior and that is essentially how this plugin or this module works and for additional details like the additional attributes for the short codes which you can use to specify things like specific course ID or specific user ID so if you're not using the short codes as part of a course which is where they're normally expected so it can't the system can't look up um, which course it's part of so it can't uh, return a value you can specify an ID if you're using it on uh, other pages outside of a course so more information about things like that are included um, in the knowledge base article that you can find on the Uncanny Owl website. And hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks.